Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Tennille and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Whitney. I'm Tennille. And today we are taking a look at yet another catch-up film. Not the one I said we were going to watch last week. Last week I said we were going to watch a German film, but we're not. Because <laughs> we're still having troubles with that film. To, for a little background info, a lot of these catch-up films are given to us by Michael Ray, who mm -hmm. is also providing subtitles to us through a different program, and sometimes the video and the subtitles put on afterward don't end up matching, so we think things are all set up so that we can watch the movie, but then when we go to watch the actual movie, the subtitles and the visuals tend to be extremely off, and so it would make watching the movie... Not impossible, but very hard to follow. Yeah, as in, like, there's a six-minute difference between the movie and the subtitles. That's kind of unwatchable. Right. Like, that particular movie, I feel like we might be able to pick up the, the broad strokes of what's supposed to be happening, but... Mm -hmm. We'll get back to it once we can get the subtitles working correctly. Yeah, so that's why there's been some hiccups in what we say we're going to be covering, and then we find out that we can't exactly do it, and so we move on to the next one. Yeah. Either way, mm -hmm. this week we are actually taking a look at Antiojito and Antifaz from, from 19 Argen from Argentina, uh -huh. 1972. Yeah. And this was fantastic. This was delightful. I loved this one. Mm -hmm. And again, I want to say thank you to Michael Ray for finding this movie. And this one did work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I totally think that if you have any kind of fondness or nostalgia for this era of animation, this is definitely one worth checking out. It's also just cute in general. It's not anything that's like... Super mind-blowing in the story department. In fact, if I had one critique of the film, I'd say that its characterization can give you a little bit of a whiplash. In order to move the story forward, they have some moments where characters the characters acting. need to act a certain way, and that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But as long as you can kind of suspend your disbelief for the sake of the story, it's still a very like satisfying story about family. Yeah, for sure. So, plot synopsis. Mm -hmm. This is a story about Antifaz, who is an eccentric inventor. Except he's not really an inventor. He just read a lot of comic books and watched a lot of TV shows, so he thinks he's an inventor. Right. <laughs> and he spends all of his time trying to invent an invisibility potion. Mm -hmm. And he has a nephew named Antiojito. Mm -hmm. who loves his uncle and does everything he can to support his uncle's endeavors in trying to make this potion that's never going to exist. <laughs> so he, as a child, is out selling balloons and doing work and stuff like that. To help keep the two of them afloat. Mm -hmm. Like, if I was to take a more realistic look at the situation, I'd be like, oh, Antiojito, get out of there. Uh-huh. Your, like, your uncle sucks. Your uncle's just using you for child labor so uh -huh. he can not do anything all day. But I'm not going to be that asshole. Like, I, I just was, but I'm not going to be that asshole because <laughs> this is very sweet. Mm -hmm. If this was a realistic setting, though, I'd be like, <laughs> So it turns out mm -hmm. Antiojito has a knack for singing. And he is picked up by uh, some breed, uh, greedy contractors yes. who sign him into a contract and give him singing lessons for half a year to make him... A super megastar. Super megastar. And they take him across the world and they're whisking him around and having him sing at all these different locations. They're making money, 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 money. Important to note is that... Uh, Antiojito and Antifaz have a upstairs, no, downstairs neighbor who Antifaz like kind of blows up their apartment on the reg. So she's mad that, uh, her house keeps falling apart. She's a witch. She's a witch also. Like, like, like she's a bad guy. Occupation witch. <laughs> yes. Um, but also like you kind of get why she's angry. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she goes to these greedy 
contractors. contractors and they're like and she's like make it so that Auntie Ojito gets like a big head and super ambitious and that'll be my perfect revenge on Auntie Fuzz because it'll he make won't him have super his, sad. Yeah, I won't have his nephew anymore and he'll die in poverty without that child. <laughs> or something to that extent. Yeah. Well, so they whisk him around all the time and he has no time to write to his uncle or anything like that. And eventually, Auntie Ojito starts getting greedy himself and he wants more and more of the cut of the money and he wants all the money until the end of the movie, he realizes, oh, I've turned into a greedy asshole. Mm -hmm. And so he's repentant and he goes back home to his uncle and he's like, please, I just want to spend time with you. And the uncle, who no longer lives in that house because he's poor as fuck, yeah. um, <laughs> he's like, well, I'm going to be done inventing as well so we can just be a family. Yeah. And so he throws away the last potion that he was working on, which turns out to actually work, but they don't realize it. Mm -hmm. And they live happily ever after as a family of... Two people and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's very sweet. Uh, it's like it's got a really wholesome message. It's got a great cast of characters. We only really talked about Antifa and uh, Antiojito, Antiojito. But like but, the rest of the cast, mm -hmm. <laughs> wonderful. The contractors, the witch, the witch's owl. Mm -hmm. There's a singing tutor who's a cat, or no, he's an owl, isn't he? No, it's a cat. It's a well, cat. Well, there's a buddy of Antiojitos who's a cat. And well, then the singing instructor is also a is, cat. Yeah, somebody else. I don't yeah, really remember. But, like, there's a lot of characters. The animation on everyone is very well done. It's there's a so little, good. There's a little, like, post box. Oh, yeah. There's, like, Antiojito's best friend is a, living, a mailbox. A living mailbox. And, like, the mailbox has great animation on him. <laughs> uh-huh. Like, I mean, most people do. It's yeah. just... That is the best reason to watch this movie. For the animation. Is the animation. It's just got really, really solid understanding of the of solid drawing. The characters feel very three-dimensional. Um, and... It has great little moments of character animation, of, like, the characters having little tics, little personality things that, like, make them feel more alive, which is just, like, very cool to see from an animated movie from this time, because, like, we don't get that super often here in the 70s. For sure. Like, this movie just has plenty of fantastic characters and moments, and it's just a fun ride. My biggest critiques of the movie mm -hmm. are, one, the plot kind of just meanders uh -huh. from setting to setting. It's not the worst ever, but it's not the most fluid and well thought out plot. And also, one other thing I could see happening is the voices could grate on you. Mm -hmm. Specifically mm -hmm. of Antiojito and Antifaz themselves and the witch. Because mm -hmm. a lot of them are up like this, and they talk like this, and they sing like this, and it's up here, and it, it can get it a little can grating be fast. a bit much, yeah. Uh -huh. So just be warned that that's how most of the characters talk. Yeah. But otherwise, this movie's really good. Uh huh. There's another animated sequence I wanted to kind of sing the praises of here a little bit, and that is when Antiojito realizes that money isn't going to make him happy. There's like a couple sequences in here that I think are just really stand out. And I, if this was a movie we were not catching up on, it would definitely be one that I would like point to as like best animated moments from this year. Oh, absolutely. And that is when they're all fighting over the money mm -hmm. and the money then goes spilling out Kind of like into the street and down the sewers. Mm -hmm. And the greedy contractors. contractors, Antiojito imagines them like morphing into rats fighting each other. Uh-huh. Which scares him and makes him run off. Which is the first 
part of him realizing maybe I shouldn't be living this life anymore. Right. And like that sequence is really cool. Mm -hmm. the, the transformation is great. The, the, the fighting and like animal like movements of the rats. Perfect. Like that. I love it. And I love a good, like <laughs> scaring a child sequence. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one that I wanted to call attention to is kind of an odd sequence, both in and out of context. Antiochito goes to a park, he sits down on a bench, and the bench starts talking to him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that just happens in this world, I guess. Uh, I mean, there's animate uh, objects and animals walking around. So I know, I know. It's just kind of a, oh, the fence, the, the bench is alive? Sure, why not? Sure, why not? And then the bench tells Antiochito a story about a spear. A, uh, a fence post. Yeah, essentially a, a fence post. An fence. iron fence post who yes. crawls out of the gutters, or uh, out of the... Dump. Dump and slowly works his way up and up and up and up in the world until he's... He's never satisfied. Yeah. And there's this great sequence where the fence post goes into, like, a mansion and he wants to challenge the coat of arms. The sword on the coat of arms so that he can take its spot on the coat of arms. Yeah. So, like, there's a fight sequence between... A floating spear and a sword, essentially. Right. And, like, that looks great. Mm -hmm. Like, they, again, they pull off the action and the combat, like, very well, considering these are two objects and not being held by anybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, like, I just found this movie very charming. I'm sad that we missed it the first go around, but I'm glad we were able to watch it now. Mm -hmm. This was directed by Manuel Garcia Ferrar. Ferrare. Uh, again... Apologies for the mispronunciation. He was also responsible for making a movie we did watch a few years down the line from here, Trapito, from 1975. Oh, and we loved that one. Yeah, other than the ending, yeah, we really liked that one. Uh-huh. <laughs> As well. And this was his first film. He ended up making six films, and his latest film was actually in 2012. Oh, wow. Okay. He died in 2013 at age 83. Mm, okay. So, so there's a very good chance we'll f eventually watch those other films. Yeah. Yeah. They, they should, we should be like on schedule now to watch his other films. Awesome. Before he started working on uh, feature length films, he also made Hajitas, Hajitas? Which was Hejitas, which was a television show from that ran from uh, 1967 to 74. It was the first animated TV series from Argentina. He was also in charge of a magazine, a children's magazine, called Antiojito, which began in 1964 and okay. seemed to have ran like like had a pretty good run in his home country. So. so that makes me think that these characters were probably already known. Yeah, which I definitely got the impression from when we were watching this, is that these are a known cast of characters mm -hmm. of it. And then when I learned that there was a children's magazine named after Antiojito, I was like, okay, well, definitely then. Absolutely. There's definitely some kind of, like, strip or something that was in these magazines. For sure. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. And it's so interesting, too, because Argentina had some of the first animated films ever made, but those films were lost to time. Yeah. So, like, nobody's really seen those films. Um, or if they have, they m probably aren't alive anymore. Right. So... Or if they are alive, they are very old. And we only get... Like, I think this is technically the first Argentinian animated film. That's what... I think I saw that on the Wikipedia when right. I was doing some basic research. Like, this is the oldest... Surviving. Surviving Argentinian film. Mm-hmm. And then Trapito would be, like, the second oldest. And we mm -hmm. watched that as well. Yeah. But, like, such a good output from 
this one director from a country that, as far as this project goes, we really haven't seen a whole lot from. For sure, for sure. I would love to see more from there. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Again, go watch this if you can. Mm -hmm. And join us back here next time as we move on to 1973, and we are watching the dubiously named Magic Adventure. A name that means nothing. Uh, oh, man. The most empty title of a name. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. That'll be from Spain. All righty. See you then. <laughs>